Hello everyone, this is Oshani from Jinta.com. In this video, we will discuss this particular problem from ISI VSTAT BMATH entrance. We recently discussed this problem in the combinatorics module of our Math Olympiad program as well as the ISI CMI entrance program. You can check the link in the description for more details related to those courses. It's a very beautiful problem and there is a lot to learn. I'll also give you a challenge question in this video. If you can solve it, please put it in the comment section. So the problem says that we have a function from 1 to 10, the domain of the function are the 10 integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. And the core domain is 1 to 2000. So the numbers output values are from 1 to 2000. We want to find a function that's find all such functions which satisfy this particular condition. That is fi plus 1 minus fi is greater than or equal to 20 for all i between 1 to 9. So it's a very special type of function such that the consecutive output values are separated by 20 or more. I'll give you an example of one such function. So the domain has, so that let's call it the domain like this, the domain has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to like 10. And the co-domain has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 2000. We want to map the domain values to the co-domain values. And we want to make sure that this condition is satisfied. f of i plus 1 minus f of i is equal to, is greater than or equal to 20. One such case could be 1 maps to 1. So 1 maps to 1. 2 maps to 21. The number 2 maps to 21. 3 maps to 41. 4 maps to 61 and so on. 4 maps to 61. 5 maps to 81. So like this we can go on up to 10. So, 10 would map to, I think, 181, right? That's right. So, notice that the consecutive, so if you take 2 and 1, the consecutive output values is 20 or more apart. So, that makes this particular function, so this is one such function, let's call it f of 1, f1. This is one such function which has this property. We want to find out how many such functions are there. How many such functions are there? How many such functions are there with this property? Now, I'll give you the solution to this problem. Of course, we can discuss the solution. But that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to give you a problem-solving strategy that can help you to start thinking about these problems. So, it's not important if I can solve the problem or not. It's important that if you can solve the problem, right? So, one way to go about this, and this is a problem-solving strategy. Problem-solving strategy. It's think about small examples. Think, so this is... I call this miniature. If you want to solve the big problem with 10 input values and 2000 output values, why don't you try and solve a small version of the smaller version of this problem? Maybe you will notice some pattern. So this is actually, there's a book called How to Solve It by Paulia. How to Solve It by Paulia. You can check that, uh, that book out. It has very interesting problem solving strategies and we use it all the time in our Math Olympiad program and ISI CMI entrance programs and Physics Olympiads as well, Computer Science Olympiads and so on. So let's go and see how this works. So maybe 
we can create a miniature like this that the domain has three numbers one two three and the codomain has six numbers one two three four five uh, three four five six and let's say the condition is if i plus one minus f i is greater than equal to two so the gap is two or more that's the condition so we can actually write down all such functions in a systematic manner so the first function of that kind will be one goes to one two goes to three three goes to five so the gap is exactly two the gap is two the second function is this that you just sort of translate it you just add one to each of the output values so the gaps remain same remember what we are trying to do is to systematically write down all the answers all the solutions this this is sometimes known as enumeration one of the reasons that i actually ask my students to enumerate solutions because once you start doing it you actually observe some pattern your mind is a is an amazing machine it observes something and then you can take a completely different route and that's what we will do in this problem in a moment it will come up so this is not how to solve this problem by the way this is we are just experimenting okay so f2 is 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 4 3 goes to 6 so you notice that what i did i just sort of slided it down okay third one now i'll just put it like this i'll just send 1 to 1 but i'll just take 2 to 4 i'll just take 3 to 6 okay so i just change the gap between the first output that's and the second output a little bit more so like this this is the first challenge challenge one can you enumerate all such functions and put it in the comment section do not solve it in the other interesting way that we will discuss it in a moment just write down all possible i've, I've written down three of them you write down all of them in the comment section let's see if you can do it okay now what we notice is that while working through these examples what we immediately notice is that the gaps are sort of defining what the function will be that's the main so the main outcome outcome of this exercise is that the gaps are defining the function the function for example in this particular case in the second function's case the gaps are the output gaps are 1 2 2 2 0 1 because okay the first output is 2 right the first output is 2 so there is one number before the first output then between the second first output and the second output the difference between them is 2 so the gap actually contains one number so that's for the second output the second output and the third output the gap is again one number there is only one number between four and six which is five so third output is this and then finally after six we have no other numbers so actually this is zero okay okay so now you see what we what i just did the one 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 zero these are the gap informations and the gap information will actually tell you what the actual output values are for each of the input values and that is sufficient definition of the function because if you can tell for which input we will have which output if you can map that out then you actually have the function right so one more time let's look at another example 
F3, F3, what is the gap data? 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, uh, 3 goes to 6, okay? So the gap data is, there is no value before the first output. So there is zero numbers before the first output in the codomain. Between the first and the second output, there are two numbers, two and three. Be between the second and the third output, there is one number. And the finally, we have after six, we have zero numbers in the codomain. Because in the codomain, we have one to six. So after six, there are no numbers. So again, zero to one zero is actually the gap information which completely defines the function, this function F3. One way you can think about it is you can start from the last gap information, which is zero. So you know that the last output must be six. Then you move one unit to the left. So you, you move across one element because that's the number of elements in that gap. Then you put four, two goes to four. And then you put two hops you go two steps to the right uh, so you go the f you get the final output which is one so the gap information completely defines the function that's what we realize while working through enumerating the miniature problem right so let's now get back to the actual problem which says that we have one two three up to ten ten numbers and the outputs, the codomain are 1, 2, 3, up to 2,000. So, how many gaps are there if these are getting mapped in these spots? Okay, so the number of gaps are actually 11. There are 11 gaps. So, the, the first gap is basically the number of numbers coming before the first output. So in the first output, that is one goes, if one goes to two, then there is, in the first gap, there is only one element. Or there could be uh, zero elements if one goes to one. There could be two elements if one goes to two in the first gap. First gap is the number of things in the codomain, number of numbers in the codomain before the first output. So there are 11 gaps, gap 1, gap 2, gap 3, up to gap 11. And all of, the, of these gap values should add up to 2000 minus 10, right? Because that there are 10 numbers which are the outputs. So when we are calculating the gaps, we are not calculating the actual outputs, right? So the number 2 if, the, if this particular number is not counted in any gap, it's not in a gap, it's actually an output value. So the 10 numbers which are the actual output does not contribute to the gaps. So we have 1990, this sum is 1990. There is one more thing. We want up from gap 2 to gap 10, we want these to be 19 or more. 19 or more we want these gaps to be 19 or more because if i plus 1 minus fi we want this to be greater than equals to 20 so between them there has to be 19 or more numbers so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give these gap values an initiation number which is 19 so so g2 prime is equal to g2 plus 19 g3 prime is equal to g3 plus 19 like this g10 prime is equal to g10 plus 19 so i'm just going to give 19 i'm going to initiate them by 19 okay so now what we have is g1 plus g2 prime plus g3 prime plus g10 prime up to g11. This is 1990 minus, now what you have to do is you have to 
delete all the 19s that you have inserted in G2, G3, G10. You've already used up those values. So 19 times 9. There are 9 gaps where you've put 19s. So 19 times 9. So 1990 minus 171. So that is 1829. 1819, I'm sorry, 1819. Okay, so now we have a sum of 11 gaps. And this is a very common problem in combinatorics. We discuss it extensively in our, um, in our Math Olympiad program, ISICMI entrance program, in the combinatorics module in particular. So this is G1, G2 prime, up to G10 prime plus G11 equals to 18, 19. So the total value is, so the number of solutions of this equation is 18, 29. So 18, 19 plus 10, choose 10, which is 18, 29, choose 10. So this is coming from number of solutions number of integer solutions problem. Okay, so this is a standard problem in combinatorics. We can prove this using bijection. In fact, we used bijection tacitly here. What we said that if we can tell the gaps, the gap information is directly bijective with the number of functions. So we sort of use bijection here. All right, I hope you learned something from this video. Mainly, I wanted to communicate the problem solving strategy. If you are interested in the Math Olympiad program, the Physics Olympiad program, or the ISI CMI entrance program, Computer Science Olympiad programs, check the link in the description. We have beautiful courses taught by passionate teachers, and there are hundreds of students who are excited to learn those things. We have a very beautiful community here. We welcome you as well. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.